Y'all give God a hand for you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, musicians. Thank you, singers. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Boy, I'm going to tell you what. We got something special right here. Amen. We got something special right here in this church, folks. I, I've been to a lot of churches. We got something special right here. When you can move into his realm, when you can move into, into the realm of the spirit like we just did, you can't do that in any church, folks. This ain't a social club. This is a house of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That first song, Chuck started preaching my message. That's how I know that we in tune. That's, why I know, that's how I know that God's in this place. The things he was saying, a lot of the stuff you won't hear me repeat this morning. Praise God. Hallelujah. It's powerful, man. When you were saying that, man, I was about to jump out of my skin. Praise God. We're going to get back into the book of Proverbs this morning, chapter 4. Hallelujah. He is worthy. He is worthy. <laughs> he is worthy. What's that? They still do it. Amen. Praise God. Y'all know hallelujah is the highest praise. So, you know, when you next time you're in a hard spot, just go ahead and say hallelujah. Just go ahead and give him a hallelujah. hallelujah. Yeah, boy, they getting ready to cut my lights off, but hallelujah. You, turn off. <laughs> you know the doc, the doctors, the doctor said it don't look good for me, but hallelujah. Hey, hey, praise God. You know my wife just cussed me out this morning. <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> No, she didn't. She didn't cuss me out. Hey, but listen to me. We just got to give a hallelujah, folks. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Go, go to Proverbs chapter 4. We're going to recap some of the stuff I've talked about for the last couple of weeks. Uh, chapter 5. Uh, chapter 4, verse 5. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We've been talking about the wisdom of God, and we've been talking about getting the wisdom of God, and we've been talking about all the benefits of the wisdom of God. In chapter five, chapter 4, verse 5, it says, Get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not, neither decline from the words of my mouth. So what God's telling us in his word right here, he wants us to be skillful in the, in the word of God. He wants us to get his wisdom so we can operate in the word of God like the word of God says. The reason most people can't operate in the word of God is because they never seek the wisdom of God. They're trying to work, they're trying to operate in the word of God under their own intellect. They're trying to work in, uh, 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 operate in the word of God in, in the natural realm, and they never enter into that spiritual realm. Listen, in order to operate uh, in the word of God with a uh, skillful You've got to get wisdom this morning, folks. And then it says get understanding, and it says don't decline from the words of my mouth. In other words, he's saying don't reduce the word, the word of God. Don't shrink back from the word of God. Don't reject the word of God, but go forward to the word of God at all times. Everything, every question you've ever got in your life, seek God's wisdom in it, and he's going to show you the way to go. It says some of the benefits that we get from wisdom, verse 6, it says if we don't forsake wisdom, it says that wisdom is going to preserve us. It says that if we love her, she is going to keep us. So in other words, when you when you seek the wisdom of God, it preserves you, it keeps you, and it keeps you under the love of God. Verse 7 says wisdom is the principal thing. We talked about some of that last week. When, the, when we said when something is the principal thing, we said it's the main ingredient. In other words, when you make wisdom the principal thing, God puts you on a platform, and, and when he puts you on a platform, that's when you're operating in his word, and that's when you can see the problems in your life, and the wisdom of God will come to you and show you how to get out of the different situations in your life. Amen? Amen. It says, and, and, and it says, and with all thy getting, get understanding. It says, exalt wisdom, and she shall promote thee. So when we lift up wisdom and we make wisdom the number one thing in our life, and we're seeking the wisdom of God in our life, that's when our promotion is going to come. And then it says, and, and, and then it says, wisdom is going to bring us honor. So when we're going through our life, it's going to cause other people to honor us. 
What's going to cause other people to honor us? Because we got a good job? Because we got a lot of money in the bank? Because we got this or that? No. What's going to cause people to honor us is the wisdom of God in our life. That's what people are going to be attracted to. Praise God. Hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost on this right here. That's what, that's what people are attracted to. They see the wisdom of God on your life. They think, you know, well, that guy right there has got it going on. Or that guy right there, it seems like that everything goes right in his life. It's because they got the wisdom of God in their life. I could use a man in here right now, Alan Rodemaker. He's a good example right there. You hardly ever, mm, praise God, you hardly ever see him go through anything and he ain't got joy and happiness in his life. It's because he seeks God's wisdom. Anytime you can't find Alan, you go to his house and he sat down there and read that word. Mm, praise God. Hallelujah. He's a good example for me. He really is. Because I need to more, more of the word. I need more of God's wisdom in my life. And he's going to show me how to get out of these different situations. And then it says for us to embrace wisdom. In other words, when you embrace something, you keep it close to your heart. When you embrace something, you clasp onto it. When you embrace something, in other words, what you do, you build a fence of the Word of God around your life. And, and you stand in that, you, you stay inside that fence at all times. In other words, you might see something that attracts you outside the fence, but if you're operating in the wisdom of God, the wisdom of God is going to keep you inside that enclosure. He's going to keep you inside His wisdom. And see, and you, might, you might go over to the edge, you might look over to the edge, but see, you're going to have the wisdom of God to know not to go outside of that circle. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. See, so we got to embrace the wisdom of God today. And this brings me up the first time, praise God. It says, She shall give to thee an ornament of grace, and a crown of glory shall she deliver you. Wisdom anoints you with grace, folks. Grace is strength. Wisdom anoints you with grace. It says, it says when you seek the wisdom of God, that God's going to put an ornament of grace around your neck. Praise God. I got me a couple props up here. Hallelujah. <laughs> He's going to put an ornament of grace around your neck. Now listen to me this morning. Hang on. Let me find my book here. Amen. I think God would give me this for a reason a long time ago. <laughs> Amen. Listen to me. So he's going to put an ornament of grace around my neck. So now I'm going to different places and i got the grace of God on my life because, see, I've been seeking the wisdom of God. Now he's put an ornament of grace around my neck and I'm going to different places and people are recognizing my life. They're recognizing my life because everything seems to be going smooth in my life. Everything seems to be in harmony in my life. Everything seems to be flowing right in my life. It's because I have, I have made a decision within myself to, 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 to seek the wisdom of God in my life. And when I seek the wisdom of God in my life, see, he put this ornament of grace around my neck. And when you put an ornament on, it causes you to be more attractive, folks. It causes a hallelujah. It causes hallelujah. Praise God. It causes the world to be attracted to you. See, it decorates your life. It draws people to you, and it gives you favor in every area. That's what the ornament of grace will do for you. So see now, if I walk into a restaurant like this right here, people are going to notice this right here. I'm using this as a prop now. People are going to notice this right here. But when you've got the real grace of God on your life, it don't matter where you go. When you walk in, people are going to notice you. They're going to notice something different about you. It's because you've got this inner strength on the inside of you. And you've got this calmness on the inside of you. You've got this kindness about you. You've got this wisdom about you. You've got this understanding about you. And it attracts people to you. Hallelujah. I'm going to take this a little step farther right here. Look here. So we walk, we walking around like this. And all right, we got the grace of God. We come up here. We got saved. God put his grace on us. So we got the grace of God. But see, we got to understand this morning, folks, this grace of God just ain't for us. This grace of God is for other people. This grace of God is for us to be an extension of God's hands and his feet into this world. His eyes and his mind and the way he thinks and the way he operates in his world. In other words, he wants us to be he wants us to be Christ-like in this world. So we got the grace of God on our life. And what the devil will do, he will deceive you this morning into thinking that this grace is just for you. And see, he, he, okay, I got my grace, so I'm good to go. You know, I'm all right with God, I'm good to go. Listen, folks, it ain't just for you. It's for other people. It's, the, it's for other people to see your life. So when you understand that, when you get that understanding, that's why it says get wisdom. That's why it says get understanding. Mm, praise God. See, you ain't got the discernment to know that this grace is for other people until you get the wisdom of God. You ain't got the interpretation of the word of God inside of you to, to give this grace to other people. 
Praise God. This is good stuff, right? See, you ain't comprehending what the grace is really for. Because you ain't been getting understand, you ain't been getting the wisdom and you ain't been getting the understanding. But when you get the wisdom and you get the understanding, where's my butt now? Praise God. Oh glory. Hallelujah. Now all of a sudden my grace is shining. Now all of a sudden people can see the grace in my life. And now this lights are bringing them right to me. And now when they, when this grace brings them right to me, hallelujah, it gives me the right, it gives me the chance to sow the word of God into their life. See, this grace ain't just for me. This grace is for me, but it ain't just for me. Now I got the wisdom of God operating in my life. I got the grace of God on my life. And now this grace is beaming out to me. <laughs> Not only do they ain't ever notice something different about me, but this grace is now activating God's strength inside of me. This grace now is now activating his, his power on the inside of me, and now it's causing me to see somebody with a need, and I meet that need in their life. I'm not just about me no more. Now I'm about doing the work of Christ. I'm about reaching outside of these four walls, and I'm about helping other people come to know who Jesus is. Listen. I'm glad, praise God. Thank you, Sister Jerry. Listen to me. You ain't never going to get nobody saved walking around thinking you holier than now because you ain't nothing without Jesus this morning. It's His grace that delivered you. It's His grace that set you free. It's His grace and hallelujah that made you who you are today. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Is my grace still bleeding? Amen. Amen. Listen to me. And what happens is, is when we give out this grace, it causes him to give us grace and then more grace. It increases our grace. It beautifies who you are as a Christian. It adorns who you are as a Christian. And it covers the nakedness of your soul and all the spots and imperfections in your life. Listen to me, folks. This grace is way more powerful, way more deeper than we ever thought possible, than we can ever think. That's why the Bible says get wisdom and get understanding so you'll understand this grace of God on your life. You've got to understand, see, we're called the bride of Christ. When we get the grace of God on our life and it's operating right in our life, it's like a wedding garment stuck with jewels and precious stones all over them. Good God, I'm out of shot that down up on top. It's like you putting on your wedding garment and you getting ready for the wedding. You look at your best. That grace is going to make you look good. That grace is going to beautify you. That grace is going to make you look attractive. That grace is going to draw people to you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. This grace is called the beauty of holiness. That's what, that, they say nothing I can't stand worse. Well, there's a lot of stuff I can stand worse. <laughs> they said that the one thing that makes me sick is somebody's always walking around quoting the word of God but ain't living the every word of it. That's what turns people off from God. But when you've got your grace operating in you, it beautifies you. I shout that I'm up with It makes you ready for the king. <laughs> it makes you ready to step into his holiness. It's called the beauty of holiness. Hallelujah. See, it is that it is that by which man is made like God in conformity to the image of Christ. The grace of God is what causes you to look like Jesus Christ. It ain't what you do, it ain't who you are. It's the grace of God that makes you look like Jesus Christ. Praise God. Glory to God. It's the curious workmanship of the Spirit of God. The curious workmanship, okay? The curious workmanship of the Spirit of God. That's why we need wisdom. That's why we need understanding because we really don't understand it. It's the curious workmanship of the Spirit of God. And the more wisdom we get, the more time we spend in the Word of God. Listen to me this morning, church. The more time we spend in the Word of God, the more his workmanship of the Spirit is made known to us. In other words, we start understanding how the Spirit of God works. We start understanding about giving and about forgiving and about loving people. See, we still try, most of us are still trying to operate with just the grace we got saved with. Come on, somebody. I'm talking about the grace the Holy Ghost gives you this morning, folks. 
I'm talking about the grace where you step on in. <laughs> yeah, you ain't just knee deep, but you up here. Hallelujah. Praise God. And you covered with the grace of God. And now you've got your grace beaming where everybody can see it. And now everybody that you come into contact with is paying attention to that grace in your life. Amen. They say, oh, wow, what is different about that person? What has that person got? Today? It's something about them. And I'm going to tell you what, if you're one of these Christians, and I'm going to go ahead and say it, I don't care. That if you're one of these Christians that's walking around quoting the Word of God all the time, but you ain't never giving no, nothing to nobody, you ain't never forgiving nobody nothing they've done to you, and you ain't walking in love, you just a salmon, tinkling brass. That's all you are, just a blabbermouth. Why don't you just shut up and get saved this morning? I'm going to shut up. Praise God. Why don't you just be quiet and get saved this morning and get filled with the Holy Ghost and really, really be transformed into the image of Jesus Christ? See, we're not in the image of Jesus Christ when we're walking around thinking this grace is just for us. This grace is an inner strength to overcome anything in our life. Wow. Chuck said it a while ago. Paul said he had a thorn in the flesh. How many people's got a thorn in their flesh this morning? Amen. Think about it. Y'all, how many people's got a problem in their life? Let me put it this way. How many people struggle with something this morning? It's a thorn in your flesh. But Jesus said, when you get this grace operating right, he said, my grace is sufficient for anything that you're dealing with this morning. I don't care if it's a sickness. I don't care if it's a disease. I don't care if it's a bad marriage. I don't care if you're broke. I don't care what it is. He said, my grace is sufficient. But the only way it gets efficient is when you get it cut off like it's supposed to be cut off. You can't get this stuff efficient when you're walking around thinking this is all for you. It ain't all for you. It's for everybody you come in contact with. Jesus didn't save you for you. He saved you so you could be an extension of the grace of God. Praise God. Glory to God. Hey, hey. And then the second part of that. It says he'll put a crown of glory on your head. Hallelujah. Now, now I'm being noticed. Now people understand. They say, whoa, what is that crown of glory? Well, hey, <laughs> praise God. If you get your grace operating right, and you get your crown of glory on your head, this crown of glory represents happiness and joy. There's a lot of different crowns in the Bible. But the, the crown of glory represents happiness and joy. So now you've got your grace operating right. In other words, you walk around, you kind to people, you tender hearted to people, you giving to people, you forgiving to people, you forgiving people, and something just smacks you right in the face. Something devastating happens in your life. Well, this crown of glory is going to keep your happiness and joy going. This crown of joy is going to be like that river flowing. And it's gonna keep your it's gonna keep your happiness and joy going. Now here you are. You got the grace of God. Your grace of God is blinging, and now you know put on the crown of glory. Something devastating happens in your life, but you still have to. You still walking around whistling, having a good time, having a good time, and people are looking at you, talking about how can he be whistling when the doctor just said he had cancer? How can he be happy when his wife just walked out of? How can, he, how can he maintain this level of joy when all this stuff is bad is happening in his life? It's because he has been seeking the wisdom of God. He's been seeking God's wisdom. He's been getting wisdom. He's been getting understanding. Now he's got an ornament of grace around his neck, and now he's got a crown of glory on his head. And, it, and what it does, it causes you to be, and it causes everyone around you to see the beauty of holiness that's in your life. In other words... Now you're a real Christian. Now you ain't a counterfeit. I ain't got to hold you up to the light see if you're real or not. I can, I can see by your actions. I can see, see, I can see by the way you live. Now listen to me, this is all right, this is just props right here. But I can see by the way you live whether you've got an ornament of grace around your neck and you've got a crown of glory on your head. I can see by the way you treat people. I can see by, the, I can see by how you seek God. I can see by, 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 by how you give. I can see by how you love other people. Are you really seeking the wisdom of God? The wisdom of God is going to put this ornament of grace around your neck. And it's going to put this crown of glory on your head. 
And now all the things that's happening in your life, you're walking through these things like there ain't even nothing happening. Other words, you're going through the fire, but you ain't even smelling like smoke when you come out on the other side. Somebody say amen to that. <laughs> Praise God. Y'all don't shout me down when I'm preaching good. Now listen to me. Hey, this is good stuff right here. You need to get a hold of this stuff this morning. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. Verse 10 says, Here, oh my son. Let me take my little hats off. Amen. Praise God. I don't want to take my grace and my crown of glory off, but I got them anyway. Amen. amen. Praise God. It says, Y'all understand that? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hear, O my son, and receive my sayings, and the years of thy life shall be many. Now he's talking to you. So, so wisdom brings long life. Now all of a sudden wisdom is a very important subject, especially if you're 50, 60, 70, or 80 years old. Now this wisdom is a little bit more important to you than it was when you was 10, 20, or 30. Now you're paying more attention to this wisdom because it says that this wisdom gives you long life. You're paying more attention to this wisdom because it says this wisdom uh, uh, gives you longevity of your life. And, and, and see, when you operate in God's wisdom, not only will you live a long, good life, but you will enjoy your life. Listen to me now. There's a lot of old people that's miserable. There's a lot of old people that's full of bitterness. But if you seek the wisdom of God, not only will you live a long life, but you're going to enjoy that life. You're going to be healthy in your life, and you're going to have a peaceful life. Amen. Praise God. Amen. 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 See, if we're going to live the life of the will of God for us, wisdom is going to have to be the base of our life, folks. Wisdom is going to have to be the platform. Wisdom is going to have to be the main ingredient of our life. If we're going to, if we're going to live a long, good life and enjoy it. Listen to me. We had to make sure we're using wisdom in every decision we make. We had to make sure we're using the wisdom of God in every word that we speak. We got to make sure we're using the wisdom of God how we treat other people. We need to make sure we're using the wisdom of God on where to spend our money. Don't y'all know y'all spend y'all's money in some foolish places? Why don't you start seeking the wisdom of God and let Him show you where to put your money? Hallelujah. Wow. wow. You see, you get quiet when the preacher talks about money, but praise God. <laughs> see, hey. <laughs> The wisdom of God will let you know who to, who to let remain in your circle. Listen to me. When you search, good God, this is fresh right here. This is, a, this, is a, this is a rainbow word right here. When you search the wisdom of God like you're supposed to search the wisdom of God and you take it serious, that person in your life that you can't seem to get out of your life, if you're searching the wisdom of God, guess what? God's going to remove them for you. You don't even have to put them out of your life. God's going to put them out of your life for you. Good. Amen. I'm a living testimony of that. See, wisdom has to be the main ingredient for us to live a long, good life. It has to be the base. It has to be the platform. It has to be the main ingredient if we ever expect to have success in our life. See, anybody, anybody has the ability to go out and make money. But see, success is much more than money. Success is living life to the fullest. Success is having, uh, having a great marriage. Success is having great relationships. Success is having a relationship with God. Success is having peace in your home. You got peace in your home? You got peace in your home? When you walk in your house, do you feel harmony? Is your, is your house filled with uh, flowing with milk and honey? Or is it filled with thorns and thistles? Wow. Listen to me. This wisdom right here will show you how to get that thing in harmony. Praise God. Glory to God. See, folks, and all this takes getting a word from God. We talked about that a couple weeks ago. There's a difference in having the word of God and getting the word of God. And I thank God that you memorized a scripture too. But see, we need, we, we, we need a word from God this morning. And once we dive into God's word and spend time with him on a constant basis, this, when you, this is when you will start receiving the wisdom of God. And this is when he can decorate your life with this ornament of grace. Get my grace back out. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. I, I, saw, I saw the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. I spent time in the presence of the King this morning. I, I sought Him for the answers of my life this morning. I searched for Him as I would silver or gold this morning. Mm, I hungered and thirsted for the Lord this morning. See, I, I, I knew that, that, that me spending time with Him met the difference of me having my grace on or not having it on. See, there's so many saved people that's got the grace of God in their life. If you've been born, you've got the grace of God in your life, but it ain't on. Because you ain't spending no time in His presence. Only the presence of God can cause you to shine. 
on his presence of God, hallelujah, what it does, it, 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 it's like a light that hits you and it radiates out of every part of you to everybody that's around you. And it causes everybody that's around you to be blessed. Listen to me. Say out loud this morning. I receive wisdom today. Now say it like you mean it this time. I receive wisdom today. I receive wisdom today. See, I thank God that He sent the, that He sent all y'all here to hear this word this morning. I thank God for what He's about to do in our marriages. I thank God for what He's about to do in our finances. I, brother, let me let me back that up. I thank God for what He is doing in our marriages. I thank God for what he is doing in our finances. I thank God for what he is doing in our health. And I thank God for the open doors in my life. Listen to me. When we get serious and seek out the wisdom of God, see, when we seek him in all our ways, we have... We know we have we have every answer that we're ever going to need for any problem we ever have in our life. It's right here. Amen. It's called the wisdom of God. Amen. And, and, we're, <laughs> and that wisdom is going to cut your grace on and once your grace gets cut on, you praise God. I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. Praise God. See, we got to know that that, that 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 the wisdom of God holds the keys to the fruits of the spirit. Let me, let me dip in. Let me dip into this a little bit. Listen, why you see you see a lot of Christians walking around, but you never even you you never see any fruits on their tree. Other words, are the fruits you do see is rotten fruit. Just like Jesus cursed the fig tree. He said he'd he come up with that fig tree, and that fig tree didn't have any fruit on it, and he cursed that fig tree, and by that afternoon, that thing was dead. So, in other words, we come in here with our three pieces on We come in here driving a car with a Jesus sticker on it. We come in here with a gold cross around our neck, but we ain't got no fruit. The only thing we got is leaves. That's all we got is leaves. Jesus is saying, if you'll seek my wisdom, I hold the keys to the fruits. He said, praise God. He said, I, I, I hold the key to all the gifts of the Spirit. Hallelujah. So today, when you seek wisdom, see, we seek wisdom so we can, we can obtain His best this morning, folks. See, listen to me. When you seek the wisdom of God and your grace is shining like it's supposed to be shining, we're my crown. And you've got your crown of glory on, you know what is going to happen? People's going to come through that door. And they're going to fall on their knees right here in this sanctuary. And they're going to give their life to Christ. Because now you are the real deal. Now, now you are operating in, in the grace of God. And now you're operating in your crown of glory. And they're watching your life. And they've been watching your life for a long time. And they say, they seeing that you're steadfast. You're unmovable. And every word you speak, you're speaking about God. It's going to cause people to come in these doors and fall down on their knees. And when they come up, they're going to say, I know it was the Lord who brought me out. I know it was the Lord I shot that. I'm going to say who brought me out of that horrible pit. And they're going to say, it is marvelous in my eyes. And you're going to hear them saying, thank you, Lord, for opening my eyes. And the next time you see them out on the street, they're going to be walking around with their grace on. And they're going to be walking around with their crown of glory on. Why? Because you had your grace on. And you had your crown of glory on. And you showed them who Jesus Jesus really was. Listen, man. Amen. Praise God. Hey, hey, the people in the world don't need to see no more religious activity. They need to see the power of God. They need to see a move of God. They need to see your spirit activated in the power, the strength of His grace. Praise God. Mm -mm -mm. See, when you start applying the wisdom of God to your life, you won't have a problem lifting up the name of Jesus. You ever notice how some people, they come to church, I, I praise God, I'm, I'm just on Christmas today. Praise God. They come to church, and they talk Jesus at church, but you can't get them to even mention Jesus outside these four walls. You can't get, you, you go up to them in the restaurant and say, praise the Lord. And here I come with my grace blinking, my crown of glory on, and I'm happy. <laughs> hey, ask Brother Mike. I, I'm witness to him. 20 years later. Amen. Amen. He used to see me every morning, 4 30, 5 o'clock in the morning down at the gas station. I'd jump out the van, praise God, glory to God, hallelujah. And I know he thought I was crazy, but praise God. Look, at, look where he is today. Look where he is today. It's because I have my grace on. It's because I have my crown of glory on. Amen. Praise God. That's a living testimony right there. Amen. Praise God. 
See, you got to understand this morning, folks. When you decide to follow the wisdom of God, you ain't going to have a problem telling people about hey, it was God who brought you out. You ain't going to have a, a problem telling people it was God who delivered you, who saved you, who healed you. See, I've decided to make wisdom the main ingredient in my life today, folks. I've decided to make wisdom the main thing in my life today. Because I know if I get wisdom, guess what? I'm going to be operating in the strength of His grace. I'm going to be operating in the strength of His Spirit. And I'm going to be able to be effective for the kingdom of God. No, nobody want to hear no old dried, dried up, look like a prudent Christian. I don't want to hear it. Carry that mess on down the road somewhere. Let me see some miracles. Let me see some power in your life. Let me see you lay down something you've been messing with for 20 years. Let me see God working in your life. That's when you're going to attract my attention. And listen, folks, that's when people's going to be attracted to you. When they see a change in your life and they see you steadfast in it. Amen, Bentley. Praise God. <laughs> Amen, Bentley. Praise God. See, folks, I'm going to go ahead and pray over this church this morning. There's a shift about to take place in every household in this church today. Mm. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and declare right now that, 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 that right now you're shifting out of poverty. Right now you're shifting out of lack. Right now you're shifting out of sickness and disease. Right now you're shifting right into the perfect will of God. Right now you're shifting right into the grace of God. Right now you're shifting right into the power of God. Right now God put His crown of glory on your head. Right now He's adorning you with an ornament of grace. Right now He's delivering you from what you've been doing. Right now you are set free. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Hey. Hey. Hallelujah. See all these problems we've been dealing with. See, God is in the process of shifting, you, of shifting them out of your life. But see, how do you get them shifted out of your life? You seek His wisdom. That's why He said in His Word to get wisdom and to get understanding. Listen to me this morning, folks. If you couldn't get it, He wouldn't tell you to get it. So it can be God this morning. But he wants you to get it. And that's what he wants you to go after more than anything else. See, he's shifting all these problems out of your life. And he's replacing them with his wisdom. He's replacing them with his grace. And he is making, he is making his beauty to be seen by everyone we come in contact with. See, people, when you're operating in the wisdom of God, you've got your grace on. You've got your crown of glory on. People can't deny what God's doing in your life. People can't deny what God's doing in your life. But when they see you come to church on Sunday and Sunday afternoon, they see you down here buying a 12-pack. It ain't working, folks. You ain't stepped into the wisdom of God. You got a form of godliness, but you ain't got a very bit of power in your life. God is wanting to impart power in your life. Amen. Just like the prayer Paul prayed for the uh, Colossian church. He said he, he knew how vital it was to begin to pray for wisdom in the church. And I'm going to start praying for wisdom for this church. I'm going to pray the same prayer that he prayed for that church. I'm going to pray that our Father's house ministry will be filled with the knowledge of his will. I'm going to pray that our Father's house ministry will be filled with all wisdom and all spiritual understanding. Listen to me this morning, folks. I'm, I'm going into spiritual warfare for this ministry right here. I'm going, gosh, I'm, I'm tired of playing church. I ain't playing church no more. I'm going to get out in the byways. I'm going to get out in the hedgeways. I'm going to roll up my sleeves, and I'm going to be a warrior in the kingdom of God. But listen, I can't do it without this grace on, and I can't do it without my crown of glory. So that's why I've got to seek the wisdom of God for my life. Listen to me this morning, folks. Y'all stay with me. I'm on. I just pray that you have all wisdom, that there is nothing that you will go through that the wisdom of God won't provide for you this morning. There's nothing that you'll ever face in your life that the wisdom of God will take, take over and, and provide for you. Hallelujah. Father, I pray that our Father's house ministry, that they are fruitful in every good work. Hallelujah. Amen. Listen to me. That's my prayer this morning, folks. And listen, what I'm going to go ahead and make one of these prayers too, you laminated so you can put this in your Bible. That you, that I pray that our Father's house ministry is fruitful in every good work. I pray that you're increasing in the knowledge of God's will even right now in Jesus' name. Father God, I thank you that our Father's house ministry is strengthened right now with the ability to do all things. Listen to me. There's nothing that you can't do if you I shut that I'm going to say if you've got the ability of God uh, in your life there's nothing that we can't accomplish church there's nothing that we can't overcome church there's nothing that we can, that can stop us today church if we understand the wisdom of God I thank you that our father's house is strengthened with might according to your glorious power and I thank God that our
our Father's house is operating in all patience, is operating in all long suffering, and we are full of the joy of the Lord. Hallelujah. See, folks, this is a prayer you ought to agree with me every day. I have the wisdom of God. Come on, say it out loud. I have the wisdom of God. All right, I got to get y'all to repeat something with me. Y'all repeat that, man. I thank you, Jesus, that you placed around my neck an ornament of grace, the strength to overcome anything, the ability to do all things. I thank you, God, that you crown my head with glory. I thank you, God, that I am filled with the joy of your glorious power. I thank you, God, that I have the strength of the Holy Spirit inside of me. I thank you, God, that my grace is turned on this morning. I thank you, God, for the crown of glory on my head. I thank you, God, for wisdom to do all things. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Y'all come on, musicians. Y'all give God a hand of praise. I'll smack the devil around this morning. <laughs>